Greetings, dear listeners, and thank you for joining us today on the Enter the Bible podcast. Just a quick warning that um, today's topic deals with some heavy stuff, uh, including, well, explicitly suicide. Um, And so uh, if that's not something you're up for today, please take care of yourself. Uh, And if you need help, uh, reach out to the suicide support line at 988. Welcome to another episode of the Enter the Bible podcast, where you can get answers or at least reflections on everything you wanted to know about the Bible but were afraid to ask. I'm Katie Langston. And I'm Catherine Schifferdecker. And today we have as our guest Reverend Dr. Holly holt Wool, who is a pastor, Lutheran pastor and professor and uh, adjunct professor of pastoral care here at Luther Seminary. So thank you so much, Holly, for joining us. For this important topic today. You're welcome. Good to be here. Great. Great to Thank have you. you. So this is one of the questions that we got uh, on the website, Enter the Bible. And uh, again, as we say, I think on every podcast, if you have a question that you would like us to address, we can't promise to address uh, all the ones we get, but um, we will try our best to address many of them. Uh, and you can go to the Enter the Bible website, enterthebible.org, and Uh, click on the link about uh, asking a question. So this is the question for today. So the the general question is, how is suicide treated in the Bible? Uh, The full question is this, and there's lots of parts to it. So I'll, I'll read the whole thing. Why does Judas die by suicide? And why are there two different accounts of this? Do we have any leads in the biblical text about what would have been if he had chosen a different course? Peter and Paul go on to be heroes in the faith, even in their regretful mistakes, yet Judas's story ends. Are there other biblical references to suicide? How do we as people of faith today make sense of suicide within the context of the free grace we receive from God? So lots to unpack there, and we'll yeah, right. can't promise to do <laughs> justice to all of those right. questions, but exactly. we, will, uh, we will do our do best. best. So let's start uh, with you, Holly. How would you start well, to answer um, First of all, I, you know, I want to just remind people that the Bible, the story of God's working with human uh, and God's creation, both the human and non-human, and scriptures are full of human experience. So we ground all these stories in human experience. So we see the fullness of, of God and humans in, in the Bible. So, you know, to, to begin there, so that Mental illness and suicide are part of the human experience is what we we see in there. So I just want to kind of draw that out. And also the word suicide, it really wasn't developed until like the 1600s. Uh, so it's very late in coming. And there there really is no uh, word for that much before that. So we have an instance of people taking their own lines in the Bible, but it's never called suicide. Uh, as you said, you know, it's a later adaption. So... Um, that's one of those modern things we kind of put on Scripture that doesn't really fit. And uh, so anyway, I just kind of want to draw, you know, th- lay that out right away. So when talking about, uh, we'll start with maybe Judas's suicide. Um, you know, why does Judas die by suicide? And we have two different accounts. So we don't really know why. I mean, it's it's really not spelled out. It's really fascinating to me that only really one of the gospel writers mentions it. In Matthew, yeah. That's Matthew mentions place. it. Yep, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, in um, Luke, it says, uh, he says uh, that the Satan entered Judas. In John, it says the devil entered Judas. And, you know, Mark is like, He's Who's a Judas? Betray- he's a betrayer. <laughs> well, you know? He's the betrayer. He's the right. betrayer. Right. You know, but yeah, there's right. no kind of, uh, you know, value judgment, mm. really, mm. or, you know, well, and it's really interesting because Mark, of course, is the spiritual gospel. You know, every there's demon possession, and Jesus is possessed with the Holy Spirit in Mark. Mm. But we don't see any of that with Judas. Jesus. So uh, so that's really fascinating looking yeah. at, at the different gospels and looking at that. So we don't know why. Uh, Matthew says it's out of remorse, yeah. you know, so that he, he, he felt bad. So he takes the 30 pieces, brings them back, and the, the chief priests are like, not our problem, right? We don't care. Just drop him and run. So then he goes out, and in his remorse, he hangs himself. And then they take that money and buy the potter's field, and then be called the field of blood. 
Now, the second time that it's mentioned in the Bible about Judas's taking his own life is in Acts. It's Acts 1, 18, where, and this is Luke's account again. So we have Luke in account that he talks about uh, um, he, that Judas bought the field and uh, in the, with the reward of his wickedness, it says in Acts 1, 18. And falling headlong, he burst open in the middle of all his bowels gushed out. So it's a really interesting story. It's different. And it really doesn't say that he inflicted anything upon himself in in Acts. So it's kind of nebulous there. And then he also talks about the field became a field of blood. So there is a little correlation with that. But now think about that Matthew and Luke in account. So Luke is really written more for uh, the Greek audiences, right? You know, that's kind of more of the focus, I would say. So just to to interject for a second, um, just for those uh, of our listeners who don't know, uh, Acts is kind of Luke chapter 2 or Luke... Part, part two. Part, part two. two. Thank you. Yes. They're one long story. Exactly. Cut in two. Right. Yeah. Thank you. So for when you're doing saying it. Luke and you, you're referring, I'm to, referring the to the acts and the Luke. Exactly. Right, right, right. Um, so in ancient Greece, suicide, one dying by one's uh, own sword, was an act of honor if you were in trouble. Mm. So is it a different viewpoint in in Luke? Then we look at Matthew's account. And, you know, Matthew follows the more the uh, Hebrew scriptures, you know, always fulfillment. So there's there's this line about the fulfillment of um, that was spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took 30 pieces of silver and a price that was paid. Uh, and I wonder, too, is is this a sense of the the um, continuation of that that connection to the to the Hebrew scriptures is, is Matthew trying to draw on that, you know, cause he's always, Matthew's always taking, Oh, this came from here. This is Isaiah, you know, all the prophets, the, the all over the place. So, uh, that's really kind of curious. And that'd be a great question to bring to your, a Matthew scholar, you know, to really kind of yeah. play with that yeah. and see, yeah, yeah. see what they wonder, uh, you know, what that thought is. I might, if I could interject again, just the, yeah. one of the one of the parts of this multi-part question was about suicide in, in the uh, larger scripture as well. I just want to note that there are other instances of people dying by suicide. Yes. Uh, seven times. Uh, yes, seven times. And I have mostly in the context the... of uh, mostly in the context of war. So yeah. Saul, King Saul, for yep. instance, at the end of First Samuel is mortally wounded and he asks his shield bearer to, right. to slay him. And mm-hmm. of course, probably one of the most and famous. And the shield bearer also Yes, does. and then the shield bearer so that's commits two. suicide. Right. Yeah. And then Samson, probably one of the more famous ones, yeah. aside from Judas, pushes. right, where he he yeah. pushes the pillars out and uh, and, and, and dies, dies uh, but, but it, he also kills thousands of Philistines. Kind of a re- retribution kind uh, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. and then there's other lesser known uh, characters Abimelech. like Abimelech and the others son of who, right. Gideon and, and, and yeah. uh, Gideon and, uh, yeah. and then Zimri, the king of Israel for a week. <laughs> Uh-oh. Zimri? <laughs> oh, yes. yes, right. Zimri right, right, was the yes. king of Israel for one week, yes, right, and then he had right, a bad right. battle, and he burned the house down, oh, down on around himself. Him. Yeah. And that's so, in sec- so these are kings. all... Uh, yeah, these are all kind of in the context of war, conflict. Right. Um, so sort of what you were saying, Holly, about the... The kind of noble the, death. The, 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 yes. the noble death, as, a, as it were, yeah. right? Kind of in yes. quotations. We would right. probably think of that in our context. So, but, but in the Hebrew Bible, I don't, I don't know that I would... I, I would hesitate to say noble death because it's yeah, not it's the n- Greek kind of concept. It's no. more... It's the... Saving except face in, the case, in one of them. Yeah, saving face. Like, don't let one... one <laughs> One person, uh, you know, wants to be is is mortally wounded by a millstone being rolled oh, off a that's wall. That's Abimelech. Yeah, Abimelech a woman by did a it. woman. <laughs> he doesn't want to be killed by a woman, and yeah. so he tells someone else to sure. kill him. Right? I mean, of course, as any of us would do. That's yeah. right. in such a circumstance. <laughs> so I don't know that it's I don't know that it's viewed positively no. in the Old Testament, but it is. It's kind of kind of except perhaps Samson. Samson is that death is viewed positively. Yeah, it says he one. killed more Philistines in his death than he did in his right. Whole life. And it was kind of he was almost and he was given again his strength right at that very end exactly. by God. Right. So, right, right, right. but the others I, I kind of view as just tragic, like yeah. especially Saul. They're kind of the yeah. tragic end to a tragic life. So mm-hmm. I don't I wouldn't call them noble deaths no. in that respect. But anyway, well, and that and no, and that and that's the that's like I said, the human experience. 
you know, there, there's all these different experiences in there. And, and then somebody said, you know, one of the questions is something about Judas, you know, yeah. what would have happened had he, yeah. had he not? Right. Yeah. You know, we have Paul and, and, and Peter that yeah. both were deniers or yeah. in some sense. It's like, yeah, that could have been, yeah. you know, Judas's fate. But why not? We don't know. Yeah. But it's, it, 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 to me, it's, it's that human experience. Yeah. There are some that we just don't have good endings for. Yeah. 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 There's, um, there's this really beautiful play um, called The Last Days of Judas Iscariot. Um, it has a lot of swearing, just so you know, dear listeners, if you go read it or <laughs> try to watch it sometime. <laughs> just FYI. But it, um, in the play, it puts Judas on trial mm. and uh, in the kind of in the afterlife. And um, lots of people come and testify, like, in his behalf or not. And, and towards the end... Um, Jesus comes, and Jesus is trying to forgive him, but Judas can't see him. Hmm. Hmm. Judas can't see Jesus. Judas can't see Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I think there's, I think there's something there in that question where it's certainly, you know, certainly um, he didn't commit. I would say like a, a, the unforgivable sin or an unforgivable sin. Um, uh, and and just as Jesus forgave the betrayals of his other right, disciples Peter. and yeah. apostles, just mm-hmm. as he forgives our <laughs> daily betrayals, mm-hmm. I, I certainly don't think that Judas would have been passed, you know, without hope yeah. in yeah. in Jesus' forgiveness. No. I, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's what we cling to. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the grace that that power of God to take life out of a situation where there may not be life mm-hmm. you know i mean that's it for christians that's that's our message right. that the whole point. that's mm-hmm. that's what we live in is mm-hmm. that there's nothing beyond god's forgiveness right. absolutely nothing and i believe this too you know and that's why uh you know the romans passage you know what should, what can separate us from the love of god you know is it famines or wars or any of this no i am convinced that Neither powers or principalities nor things present nor things to come can ever separate me from the power of God's love in Christ Jesus. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Ever. And that's right. and that's the word that that uh, you know, for families that that live with this and experience mm-hmm. this in their own lives, that's the word that I offer mm-hmm. is we cling to that God, power of God's grace. Yeah. Yeah. And and the, the fact that there's really no judgment in the scripture on this. Mm. You know, it doesn't say taking your own life is a sin. It doesn't say that in the scripture. It says it's brokenness and there's pain. Yeah. I think, yeah, I mean, I think there's different inter- I, But I you agree. Can, you know, it's if not, you talk about, you know, the right. commandments. Right. I mean, don't, you shall not you shall you shall kill. Not kill. Would right. seem to also imply you shall not kill yourself. And right. at the same time, we know that. So, you know, I just want to say that there's that. Yes. Oh, um, re- re- which has 100%. been the traditional churches. In, I mean, the right. traditional church teaching, right? Yeah. These, uh, but, but, and at the same time, we know that suicide is um, most often the result of depression and mental illness of some kind. And, and so we can also talk about suicide as the result of an illness, right? Mm-hmm. Just like mm-hmm. someone dies from cancer, yeah. right? So... So there, I, I think, just as you said, Holly, we in those terrible, terrible situations where someone has yeah. taken their own life, we we cling to the promises of God that that God's love reaches. Uh, uh, you know, God's love is not stopped even by death. Um, at the same time, and we we were talking before we started recording here. Uh, I've I've been I've conducted funerals for people who have died by suicide um, as a pastor. Uh, I've attended funerals of people who have died by suicide, you know, and I think that's true of m- most of us. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we we want to be careful in those funerals not to inadvertently mm-hmm. glorify suicide, right? I, th- I think it's too easy. Uh, or it's a balancing act, right? Mm-hmm. Especially when a young person, say a high school student, commits uh, or, or dies by suicide. Um, we don't want to kind of glorify them so much in the funeral that other young people might be tempted to, you know, well, I, that person's gotten this much attention. And I, and I know that's mm-hmm. hopefully not a huge danger, but 
I just want to I just want to be clear in any kind of talking about suicide that it's it's not the best choice that it's the bad it's a bad choice because it tears families apart in a way that you know a death by cancer for instance may not as much it's just it's a terrible choice uh so it's a balancing thing right yes god's grace covers yes god's love is not stopped even by death and this person made the wrong choice um but I know you you want to qualify that yeah. perhaps a bit. Well, I was going to read. Uh, can yeah, I read yeah, a passage? Yeah. The, this yeah, is yeah. Uh, from the Life Saving Church by Rachel A. Keefe, uh-huh. Faith Communities and Suicide Prevention. Oh, good. And at the very end, she says, uh, "She says, is suicide a sin?" Hmm. Uh, this, of course, is the big question that many readers were hoping that I would answer. Yes, suicide is a sin, but not in the way you may think. As I have clearly stated, I believe that God is not a fan of suicide, though I believe God is merciful. However, if sin is a break in the relationship with self, with the neighbor, with creation, or with God, then suicide means that or suicide meets that definition of sin on several fronts. And then she kind of goes on. But I thought, you know, that yeah. capsule yeah, that says it very well and does. clearly yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that and and I can give you the church history of how uh, you know Augustine was trying to stop people from uh, choosing suicide and place of per, uh, of um, uh, persecution in the early mm-hmm. church mm-hmm. so he's the one that kind of uh, was to denounce suicide as an unforgivable sin uh-huh. and then it was uh, Aquinas who uh, de- declared uh, suicide a mortal sin uh, in the history of the church so Augustine said Augustine said it was was, was against so people who were Dying by suicide instead of submitting to persecution. Right. It was, I see, I see. Yes. Okay. Well, instead that's of a doing pretty that. unique circumstance. <laughs> it was, right. And so it was a sin against God. So yeah, then, of I course, see, then it starts morphing, and that's what happens. You know, if it's a certain situation, then right. we start putting all of that in that same situation, yeah, but it's right, not right, the right. same. So, right. so you know, it, it becomes a real um, complex Yeah, and, well, and then you movement. get this terrible pastoral care, right, of... Right. That, that people who die by suicide aren't allowed a burial in, in the, church the church graveyard or right. in the church building. Yeah. Uh, what? 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 Oh, yeah. that's an. Yeah. Yes, that's a thing. There have been, and and you'll go to some of these old cemeteries where there's there's just little headstones outside with no names outside on them. Outside the graveyard. Right. Yeah. Outside of the, the fence. Of or, the fence. Yeah, I have yeah, a yeah. picture of that, and this still happens. And uh, I have a student from Tanzania who who says that if you die by suicide, you can't be buried in the church, you can't have a funeral, uh, and then the, they can't decorate yeah. the yeah, the yeah, graves, yeah. Uh, the cross is upside down on the oh grave. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's terrible. Uh, and, that's, and, and, you know, we've kind of done that. We, we used to do that in the, not as, in, yeah. in, in the, the U.S. Uh, it's not that bad anymore, no, but, no, but no. there's still a lot of, of course, that's just shame and guilt around it. salt in the wound of the... Remaining well, family, well right? and yeah. here's what's even worse. So that the coroner, uh, it was was is means the crown's plea. So the coroner was supposed to find out who died by suicide, and whoever died by suicide was supposed to all their stuff went to the to the uh, the the uh, the crown. Oh, to the government, to the oh. government oh, way oh back. Goodness. Yes, oh. Oh, uh, that was uh, you know way back. So that was in in England. Um, they would find out. Who died by suicide, and all their property would go to wow. the crown. So, 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 we, so thankfully, we're not in. We're yes, not, we're in not that. there no. anymore. So, uh, you know, yeah, it, it, we have evolved as a church. You know, yeah. but, but yeah, yeah. you know, to, when we start out with the scriptures, and we see kind of you know very little and a little nebulous stuff, and then yeah. see how that built through church uh-huh. history and how how it became more and more. So you couldn't even be buried yeah. in the yeah. church, yeah, yeah, and yeah. and there are still people that will say it's an unforgivable sin. Right. There's right. only one unforgivable sin in the whole scriptural witness, yeah. and that is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Right. Which right, right. I still want to know what that means, but, but we can talk about topic. that on another <laughs> podcast. <laughs> yes. Right. But yes, the good, yes, exactly. There's only that one unforg- unforgivable sin. So we we have come, I hope, uh, in the in the history of the church to understand suicide as as a part of an illness uh, uh we've under we we've come to understand the need for pastoral care for those who are left behind um and the real need to intervene when we 
Uh, you know, when we sense or when we know that someone is contemplating suicide. So I know you had some suggestions. Is that right, Holly? What what, what do we do as as Christians, as friends, as parents, as siblings? Yeah. There's, you know, care, reach out um, and uh, say that you're you're there. You know, I, I care about you and others care. Help help them get help. And and that and that can be a long journey in itself. Mm-hmm. Um, keep a person safe if they are actively doing that. And if 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 they have the more dangerous it is if if they are thinking of killing themselves and they have a plan and they have the means, mm-hmm. call nine one one and get help. You know uh, because uh, you know some people may not have a plan. Then, then you can talk with them and and help them get help. But if they have a plan and they say at this time I'm going to do this, mm-hmm. and I have all the supplies I need, then that's when you act immediately yeah. Yeah. to keep the person safe yeah. and care, yeah. and and just realize the deep pain, mm-hmm. and when you come alongside and and that that the options uh, for someone, especially in, in deep dark depression. They narrow. It's hard to see the light, yeah, 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 yeah. and and to just carry that for them. Uh, tr- try not to shame. Come on, you should feel better. Or yeah, right. you know, that's what a lot of people do. Is well, you got a lot to live for. Yeah. Well, you know, I hear your pain, and and that's where, you know, uh, I, the 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 Psalms, the the Book of Lamentations, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then Psalm eighty eight. Here here's a story about uh, Psalm eighty eight is the only. A uh, lament psalm that never ends in hope. All the other laments yeah. have some type of hope to it. Mm. 88 to the end, despair, yeah, yeah. despair, yeah, yeah, despair. Yeah, yeah. Well, there is one guy who, who was uh, reading through uh, Psalm 88, and he was experiencing depression, and he said, you know, I thought I had it bad, and this guy <laughs> has it worse. <laughs> and if that's in the Bible, maybe it's okay that I can bring that up to God. And and that's where I, I think the lament, I, and I use this a lot in other areas of pastoral care too, but here is that you can you can complain to God, you can mm-hmm. bitch to God, you can mm-hmm. bring your, bear your soul, yeah. mm-hmm. and God is not harmed by that. Yeah. God can take your anger, God can take your bitterness, God yeah. can take your pain, and will not hold that against you. God, yeah. God's not a, 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 a wilting flower. No, yeah. God's no. not easily God is not offended. Fragile. Right, right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, no, God is not right. right. And if we earn yeah. anything, when we that. say that the Bible is about God's relationship with humans and the human experience, God created us yeah. for relationship, and God wants to hear about it. Yeah, amen, amen. That's those are wise words, and. It warms my heart as an Old Testament professor to hear oh. you talk about lament. <laughs> the lament well, I did that on purpose just yeah. for you. No, yeah. 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 no you're no, right. I mean, the, the book of Psalms is the uh, book of, oh. of raw human emotion. And so being able to understand that, e- and the book of Lamentations too, being able to know that even those experiences of deep despair, deep anger, um, are 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 uh, allowable uh, to bring into the relationship with God. Uh, and, and in fact, God knows how we feel anyway, so why not be honest, right? So even these feelings, maybe even especially these feelings, uh, are part of our life with God, uh, and, and we can speak them out. Um, so thank you so much, Holly. I know there's so much more we could say, oh, yes. so much more. Yeah. Uh, but uh, a little bit. yeah. But uh, but this hopefully has has at least begun to answer that question. It was yeah. a great question, and again we invite other people to to ask questions. Um, but I I want to close with what you quoted uh, earlier, Holly, because I think those are words we need to hear again. So, to people who are in despair, uh, who who uh, need to, uh, who we hope will reach out for help, and to those who have been touched by suicide in such a profound way and, and um, you know, have had a family member or loved one die by suicide. Uh, hear, hear these words that God, God is able uh, and God uh, wills life uh, even in those circumstances. So uh, what are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? 
who will bring any uh, sorry who will bring any charge against God's elect it is God who justifies who is to condemn who will separate us from the love of Christ will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword know in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us for I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen.